Okay, well, welcome everyone to Family Planning Using Social Media to Engage Youth Virtually. Um, thank you for being here. My name is Elizabeth Pena and I'm a youth, um, youth Engagement Project Coordinator for the California School-Based Health Alliance. And before we get started, I just wanted to touch on some housekeeping. For audio, um, feel free to dial in and for higher quality, dial a number based on your current location. Um, and you can find this in your webinar um, invitation link. The webinar is being recorded and all supporting materials can be found on the website. And I'll be able to share the website in just a moment. And um, the panelists have decided that questions will be um, responded to as they come in and we'll try our best to answer them right away. And you can find the chat feature towards the bottom of your screen. So for everyone that hasn't heard of the school base, the California School Based Health Alliance, we are a statewide nonprofit organization dedicated to improving the health and academic success of children and youth by advancing health services in schools. So we're really dedicated to two basic concepts. Healthcare should be accessible and where kids are located and schools should have the services needed to ensure that poor health is not a barrier to learning. And we do this through capacity building, technical assistance, workshops and webinars like the one we're having today. Um, on the screen, you'll find a link to our website where you'll find the recording, slides and many additional resources. Now I'd like to move on to introducing our amazing presenters today from San Isidro Health. And we'll start with Jessica Beltran. Mm -hmm. Jessica Beltran is a pro program director mostly focusing on adolescent and sexual health. As a program coordinator, she works directly with youth facilitating the Youth Advisory Board. Jessica has three years of experience providing sex education in middle schools and high schools across Southern San Diego. She is passionate about learning from youth, empowering them to make healthy choices, and finding ways to engage with youth in the digital era. Jessica is currently in graduate school for, for a master's in public health in Latin American studies. She is committed to reproductive health promotion and education among Latinx youth. Next, we have Ashley Rojas, a health educator at San Isidro Health. Ashley graduated from San Diego State University in May 2019 with a bachelor's degree in public health. While at San Diego State University, she was involved in many organizations on and off campus supporting the needs of various communities. She taught at San Diego State University for three years as the Chemistry 100 Instructional Student Assistant for freshman commuter students. This gave her the teaching skills she needed for a classroom. Ashley also grew up working with her mother at a nonprofit after school program called Think Together, centered around helping adolescents with learning, eating better, and staying active. She is also excited to take her teaching skills into the public health field while at San Isidro Health and work with the population she knows will benefit from her lessons. Next, we have Jess Melendez. She is also a health educator. Since 2015, Jess has been teaching comprehensive sex education to youth at San Isidro. Oh, just to youth. At San Isidro Health, Jess facilitates workshops in middle school and high school using a shame-free and non-judgmental lens. She is also a mentor in the Teen Clinic's health, Peer Health Advocate Program. Jess provides tools to help youth identify mixed messages society creates about sex and sexuality. She had the opportunity to create a high school porn literacy lesson that is now implemented in the Be Real, Be Ready sexual curriculum facilitated in the San Francisco Unified School Districts. Her main topics of focus include porn, porn literacy, media, reproductive anatomy, HIV and AIDS, and sexual orientation. So big thank you to Jessica, Ashley, and Jess for being here with us today. And I'll be passing it over to y'all now. Fantastic, thank you so much, Elizabeth. So 
Welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today for our webinar. We will be discussing engaging youth in social media. Once again, we're going to be presenting um, by myself, Jess Melendez, my coworkers, Jess Baldran and Ashley Rojas, and we are all from the San Ysidro Health Team Clinic. And so to make our webinar a little bit more interactive today, we're going to be using a tool called Mentimeter. This is something that we highly recommend when facilitating any type of a workshop or presentation or webinar um, to really help engage your audience. So for those of you who, are, who have a phone to use to participate in this, you can go ahead on your phone and go to your phone browser, whether you have Safari or if you have Google Chrome, you can type in www.menti.com. And once you type that in, all you need to do is insert this code that is on the top of this slide. Every single slide that we show today will have this code. So if at any point you get knocked off or you get kicked out, you can refer to the code at the top. But the code is 25938585. And this will be a great way for us to um, kind of have further discussions along with our webinar today, as we'll be asking a couple more questions. And this is just mostly like an icebreaker to see how y'all are doing, because it is Thursday, um, first month of the year. Um, are you number one? Are you the cat that's like cozy and chilling, feeling good? Are you number two? Are you the cat that wants to stay in a box and not come out for the rest of the day? Yeah, that's me. Um, are you cat number three where you're feeling kind of derpy and you're just like, Meh, I want to lay down in this little soft blanket? Are you cat number five where you're kind of trying to lay down, but you really cannot calm down? Or are you cat number five, uh, which I like to refer to as chaotic cat? Um, it is Thursday, so who knows? So time kind of feels um, like a construct these days um, as we are in 2021. So thank you to those who are participating so far. It looks like we have a lot of folks who are kind of in the in between of kind of feeling like the derpy cat or the cat that wants to relax but really cannot. So thank you so much for participating in this. And once again, this code will be on every single slide that we show today. So our consensus kind of looks like we're in the middle. Awesome, we will go ahead and move along. Thank you so much for participating in that. And I'm gonna actually hand this off to uh, Jessica Beltran. Thank you, Jess. And thank you everyone again for participating in our mentee. Um, just a little background on our organization and where we come from. We do work for a healthcare uh, organization called San Isidro Health. It is a federally qualified health center and we offer services all from medical, dental, behavioral health, behavioral health, and other type of support. We are, San Ysidro Health is in the San Diego County. So if you're not familiar with Southern um, California, it is the first city to cross the Tijuana-San Diego um, border. So we're, our closest clinic or our first clinic is actually um, like 15 minutes, less than 15 minutes away from from the border. So we're definitely working in a um, very special and unique population. And the clinic that we work at specifically is called the Teen Clinic. So in our next slide, we have um, the services that we offer for people ages 12 to 29. Um, they're all free and confidential. Um, and your basic reproductive health services, birth control, emergency contraception, condoms, STI testing, pregnancy testing, and counseling. Um, again, we're located in Southern San Diego. Our clinic specifically is located in, in Otay, and we are Title X funded, and we do um, accept family pack. That's the way that our services are free um, and confidential. Next slide. And I think the next slide, Jess, and um, we'll take over for this. Great, thanks, Jess. So we are gonna begin talking about the outreach that we conduct with our teen clinic through social media. Um, even now we're, we are in COVID times and this also applied to pre-COVID as well, but now more than ever, because we're all of us collectively are not really able to do in-person outreach, social media is going to be the best place to expand your outreach. So for us, we expand our social media presence um, using different platforms to reach, engage, educate, and link youth to our services. 
Um, also for our organization, we currently conduct outreach through classroom presentations that are offered virtually. So right now in the school districts that we have a collaboration with, we're able to go into classrooms and offer health education uh, presentations. And at the same time, we're able to discuss the reproductive health services that young people have access to if they come to our clinic. And also just to kind of discuss the minor consent rights that are available in California for them. So that's another way for us to be able to conduct outreach. And so far, our most successful social media platform has been Instagram. And if you wanna maybe follow along later, um, or maybe during our presentation, this is our small little handle um, at SYH Teen Clinic for Instagram. So here's another discussion question that we want to kind of start off with. What keeps you engaged in social media? So if you can think about the social media that you like to participate in, what keeps you engaged? Are you a person who likes to go on Twitter because it is consistent news? Do you like to go on TikTok to explore different interactive worlds um, and genres that just continue to pop up every single day? Are you a fan of Instagram? Um, do you like scrolling through memes, um, following influencers uh, or other organizations? Um, are you on Facebook? <laughs> are you still on Facebook? Is anyone still on Facebook? Um, trying to connect with other folks. But what keeps you engaged in social media? And if you are a person right now who is thinking, I honestly don't even use social media, I'm kind of over it, write that down, put that down in the Mentimeter. Um, because I know for a lot of us, we may be engaging in social media, but some of us like to take a break too, uh, especially when we're trying to take a break from screen time, um, or maybe we take a break from certain social media contents. I know for me, I have to take a break from Twitter sometimes because sometimes it's just overwhelming. So let's see, what keeps you all engaged? Memes, um, absolutely. <laughs> How else do you get through the day, duh? Seeing what my friends are up to, staying up to date, staying up with the younger generation, chisme, absolutely. See what your friends are doing, the controversy. Uh, yes, there's always gonna be drama, whether it is like real drama or um, political drama. Um, masochism, interesting. That's a answer I wasn't expecting, but I really like that. Thank you for sharing friends, what is trending, pictures in general, creativity, funny content, yes, we need to laugh, food recipes, positive quotes, see all family pictures that I don't see all the time, staying connected with friends, cats, yes, or any other animals. In order to stay engaged, I need to relate to topics. I don't have any social media accounts. The news, current news, events, fashion, um, keeping up with family and friends. I'm seeing a lot of things that have to do with things that are present, what's trending. You wanna see what's going on in the world. You wanna see what's going on with your friends, what's going on with your family. But we also wanna take breaks to see things that are creative, things that are funny, um, and maybe things that are controversial too. Sometimes we like to test ourselves or challenge ourselves. Or maybe sometimes we walk into social media and we're like, all right, someone is trying to test me today. Here we go. So social media can be unexpected that way too. But these are all different reasons why we stay engaged with social media. All of these also apply to why young people are engaged with social media too, and what certain things keep young people engaged in social media. So thank you all so much for participating in this um, discussion question. We'll go ahead and move on. Okay, so how to engage youth with social media? Well, this kind of sounds like a known brainer, but having youth centered content in order for young people to want to feel engaged in any type of social media content, they want to be able to relate to it. So one thing is you young people being able to see people that look like them. So for instance, if somebody's using a social media platform like, uh, excuse me, Instagram or TikTok, young people want to be able to see pictures of other young people. And I'm not talking about like stock photos of teenagers. <laughs> Let me tell you right now, young people will fish that out so quickly and they may even disconnect with your page if they see stuff like that. So I know you might be thinking, well, where am I supposed to find young people? We'll talk about that if you don't already have programs that collaborate with young folks. Um, another important thing to recognize too is that staff isn't always in the target population when we're trying to engage youth. Now, depending on your organization or the clinic or what have you that you're working with, 
um, we tend to work with a diverse um, uh, population within ourselves. However, it is not always possible for us to assume that because our department is so diverse and our organization is so diverse that we're meeting every single target population. So that's just something to be mindful of um, as you are creating content for social media. <clears throat> Excuse me. One thing that we like to suggest is using other youth and programs. This is something we'll talk about in a little bit, but definitely referring to young people who may be a part of school-based clubs, school-based ASBs. This also gives young people the opportunity to link their peers to this information that they're getting. Um, and that's linking peers to maybe the education they're receiving or a meme that they saw or um, the services that are linking to your specific school-based health organization. And this can look a bunch of different ways, whether that's somebody reposting something or even just word of mouth. Young people know what's trending. They know what works for them and they're going to know what doesn't work for them. So it makes sense to have the voices of young people being reflected in the social media that you are creating. Um, there might be some type of a disconnect sometimes if somebody is like showing a meme that was five years old and is considered too old or what have you um, compared to a meme that just popped up yesterday. Um, like for instance, we all saw the Bernie Sanders picture, right? That trended uh, last week, it's been a couple of days. As of right now, according to the internet and what's trending, that is over now. So if people are still creating Bernie memes, that is considered something that is no longer trending. Just a small example. And when it comes to the different social media platforms that we really like to suggest and focus on is Instagram as a whole and TikTok. So what you see in front of you are some examples of youth content that has been created on our social media account. So I am currently um, a co-facilitator for our peer health advocate internship, where we have at least 18 young people in our internship and we meet once a week. And every other week we have a shift that focuses solely on social media. And those shifts give young people the ability to create whatever content that they want to, to either put on our Instagram page or on our TikTok. Young people have the ability to create posts with pictures of themselves. Um, they can create informational posts, they can create videos. So what you see in front of you are just a couple examples of what we've done in the past. So you'll see some pictures that have, um, we call them our PHAs, our peer health advocates, um, actual posts and stories. So on Instagram, and this is all featured on Instagram, we have a post where it talks about self-care from their own eyes. So um, our PHAs had the ability to, to talk about what they do for self-care, their own li lived experiences. For those of you who may not be too familiar with Instagram stories, Instagram stories offer um, a tool that creates more interaction on a Instagram account and an Instagram page. So our PHAs for this example wanted to focus on mental health. And this is when they created interactive questions where people would record their anonymous answers and they could be shared, or they even created polls um, or true or false questions to really kind of dispel myths about mental health. You'll see also in the middle are some pictures of real people um, that we kind of show as a throwback to in-person content, just to kind of remind folks of past events that we may have that we have done. Um, the first picture shows some of our PHAs doing outreach at their school. Uh, the picture on the bottom, the, our PHAs are very proud of this. Um, but in 2019, they created a holiday tree uh, that was made out of blown up condoms. And this tree sat in our waiting room in our clinic for um, a month or so, but they're very proud of that and wanted to show on their social media. And then lastly, um, we also have something called our PHA PSA. So this is when once a month, one of our peer health advocates are featured and they create any type of content that they want to on any type of topic that they want to um, based on what it is that they're passionate about. So these are some examples of what some of our folks have shown. And then this right here is just to kind of show what those stories really look like when we're talking about things being interactive. You'll see that there are those anonymous questions that we asked and folks gave us their answers so we could repost them on our stories for people to see. Um, this is a really good feature to have on Instagram stories because this really lets young people know that their voices are being heard. 
we are sometimes responding to what the answer is to their question, uh, depending on uh, what the question is being posed. But yes, we always reshare the answers that young people give us. Great, and I'm gonna hand this off to Ashley to talk about barriers. Yes, thank you, Jess. So another Mentimeter question, what barriers are you experiencing with youth engagement? So this can be anything and everything. Um, this could be COVID related, before COVID, just any barriers you have. Um, we will definitely go into our barriers and kind of talking about ways to kind of overcome those. So any and all barriers you may be facing now or you have faced before when it comes to working with youth. All right, they're already coming in. So retention and getting them interested in following us. Yes, we will definitely talk about all of these things. Keeping attendance consistent. Yes, we've dealt with that as well. Attention, not motivated, followers, school closed. Um, cameras are turned off during class presentations. Yes, we've even had that with our own meetings, youth meetings, um, having their camera turned off, lack of motivation, making contact, definitely if they're overwhelmed, approval for youth generated content. Yes, that could be a huge barrier. Having them as followers, that is a great point because even for our Instagram, as much as we wanna promote everyone following it and getting our followers, it really is a page for the youth. So at the end of the day, we definitely collab with organizations and everything, but um, overall, we wanna make sure that the youth actually wanna follow our account. So keeping them interested in participating, if they're disconnected, not motivated, I'm seeing a lot of that. No safe space to access video. That's an amazing point and a huge one with classrooms, with meetings. Um, if they don't have you know, that room to talk about, whether it's sexual health, maybe it's just important topics to them. If they're sharing that household with who knows how many people or could have that anxiety about who's listening. Um, and then texting and confidentiality. Yes, these are all, all great barriers to mention. And it's almost nice knowing that all of you are also dealing with these and seeing that you're not alone in that sense when it comes to the barriers you're facing. And it's not just say your youth group, the way you're teaching, it really is something we're all dealing with right now at the moment. Trust, cameras off, mic off. This is why I love Mentimeter. I feel like when it comes to us teaching, having meetings, um, this is a great way to get all of you to talk without even having to turn your mic or camera on and kind of say it anonymously. So that's why we really, really encourage Mentimeter for this sense um, that you can almost say anything. And if you try to put something inappropriate, it would also block it off. So it would look like a bunch of numbers, which is also good to know. So keeping up with growing number of social media apps, admin gatekeeping, access to social media. Yes, consistency, parent support, awesome. Thank you so much for all the participants for this one. Let's actually talk about some barriers we faced and how we can overcome them. So thank you again for all the Mentimeter answers. All right, so obviously coming from what we have having a teen clinic being able to promote our teen clinic and having youth groups to promote it as well we understand that not all of you paying attention to this webinar even have a youth group or have access to having a youth group you can kind of control and have meetings and be able to really collaborate with them we do promote collaborating in general with any clubs at school if you're working with a school or other local organizations wherever you are in your city, in your area, this is a great way to connect with whether you're, for us in San Diego, we'll try to collab as much as we can with other organizations around us, just to know what resources there are out there for youth. And knowing that if we promote that on our page together, we're really having the best platform in general to get youth to even follow us, know what's out there, and promoting that all, all together, we're all working for the same purpose. We're not just one, like we wanna be the best organization 
Um, it's really for the youth. So at the end of the day, whether it's understanding, you know, where youth are coming from and what they need, really, really reaching out to any pages you you follow, you like. Honestly, that's how we got involved with the California State Health Alliance is um, the LA Trust saw our Instagram page and DM'd us. So it was as simple as that. Uh, someone reaching out to us from Los Angeles all the way to San Diego, that small connection can go a long way. So if there's anyone that you're willing to reach out to, do it because you can get some great advice from other local organizations and even seeing what they have on their page as well. And then keeping engagement alive virtually. So obviously keeping engagement is so hard, especially like you all said, whether it's youth not comfortable with turning on their cameras, um, their microphones, if they're not attending in the first place. Well, it's really, really hard for us to, but we've tried our best to incorporate as many interactive ways to still keep them involved as possible. Um, so whether it's just, you know, having those Instagram stories, getting, asking the questions, you know, putting out ways to get them to reach out to us. If it's putting our number out there as many times as possible to get them to text us, really, really promoting that as much as possible. And then Jess, you can go to the next one. So for us, obviously we said we still have barriers too, even when it comes to having a youth group and having youth to work with, whether it was attendance, um, still not them turning their mics on, lack of motivation, um, not even really feeling as, it's hard to see the work they're doing um, when they're at home and not working with a group. So I think when it comes to that, it's still feeling like they, they have a purpose and they are doing something meaningful with the work they're doing. So what we try to do and incentives has been a great, great way to get youth involved. But in the past, when we were in person, one of the best incentives that we had for youth was food. Um, I just want to point that out there that youth loved having food at meetings, snacks. Uh, we had dino nuggets and Costco pizza, not the healthiest, but that was a huge, huge one that youth got excited about. But obviously for these times, um, we try to do incentives and this doesn't have to necessarily be a gift card. This can be as something as like a goodie bag they pick up from our office or we do a goodie bag drop off, whether it was for Halloween, um, the holiday holidays time, whether it was um, Christmas, Hanukkah, whatever holiday they're celebrating. Um, really just making sure that we're reaching out to them and giving them something for the work they're doing. And then another way we were able to conquer one of the barriers was virtual retreats. So this, I've never been to a virtual retreat before. Obviously being in person, it's super fun to do retreats and maybe sometimes not always the most fun, but um, this was actually a really fun way to get them all to not think about the work they're doing and kind of take a break, whether it was from making social media posts, which could seem like a lot at the time, especially if you're always on your phone, always on the computer. Um, that Zoom fatigue is very, very real. And especially if they're on school. So we made sure that when it came to the retreats, they weren't doing anything um, too, too crazy. They're just relaxing. So we did cookie decorating. Um, we had our mics on and our, actually we didn't have our mic on. We had our cameras on and everyone was kind of just decorating their cookies. We we're able to get um, cookie decorating packages to them. So everyone had equal amount of cookies, frosting, and they all got to show it after. And that is featured on our Instagram as well. We did a painting party. So a San Diego um, organization actually was able to give us all canvases and little paints. And we did a virtual painting party together and she hosted it. It was awesome. And then another way to keep up with the youth and keeping them engaged is trying to figure out what platforms they're using and other ways um, to really get them active. So one of those I would recommend is Discord. And if you're like, I have no idea what Discord is, I didn't either, but our youth really, really pushed for us to start using Discord. And this has been a really nice way of us all meeting um, on a different virtual platform and kind of getting rid of that Zoom fatigue and staring at the same um, platform and how it looks 24 seven. So Discord actually has a different layout. You're in a whole different, you can set up different rooms and it just looks a lot different. It almost looks like you're in like a fun video game instead of like a Zoom meeting. 
So, and at the end of the day with youth and understanding um, all these barriers is recognizing where they're coming from. And I already saw that from a lot of your answers when it came to barriers, just knowing that whether they're in a household where they can't virtually meet or, you know, if someone's listening to them 24 seven, it's gonna be really hard for them to engage. Um, maybe they're trying to balance a lot of different things. And um, when it comes to youth, just know everyone's kind of in a different place. But at the end of the day, if you have youth you're working with, always, always reach out to them, have that helping hand still for them and check in, you know, just see where they're coming from. Maybe they won't exactly reach out to you in that moment, but they will appreciate you reaching out to them in the long run. And then I did see a quick um, a little comment that Discord is only for gaming. That's what I thought too, but they've actually expanded it a lot to be able to use it as a platform, whether it was for meetings or um, if you did wanna use it as a way to meet up and play a game together, you can, but it's a really user-friendly um, uh, application or web browser to use even for meetings. And then Jess, you can definitely continue on. Thank you. Thank you. And I just wanted to also recognize um, and add on a little bit, because I know people um, had said in the in the mentee discussion board about the cameras being turned off and that being one of their barriers. I think that's something that we've definitely struggled with. Um, with our within our youth groups and even like when we go into classrooms but you know what it's just we it's just something that we not necessarily put up with but it's just something that we allow to happen um because we we definitely are not we don't believe in like forcing them to turn their cameras on because again like some of you have already said we don't know what's going on at home we don't know what type of um, space they're in. So we really just, especially during these times, just try to be as patient as possible, try as much to really be mindful with, with youth. Um, and slowly but surely, some of them do start turning on their cameras. Like it's not going to happen like right away, but hope like as you start building that rapport with them, like they start turning on their cameras, they start um, maybe just using their voice, um, the microphone feature, um, but definitely, definitely just be being patient with him, I think is, is really important. All right, so now moving on to other tips. Um, so we are a social media team. So for our Instagram or for our general social media, we do have youth um, obviously engaged in it. But as a staff, we are a team. So right now you're seeing me, Ashley and Jazz, there's actually three more people that are in our social media team. So overall, it's six of us um, that come together every week to come up with content that we think um, is gonna be is gonna be you know good to post on our stories. Obviously, we always want to engage youth um, as much as we can, but youth can't. You know, they have other responsibilities, um, and especially during these times. It may get overwhelming for them. It did happen to us. Um, I know um, just recently where our youth that are involved in our social media um, weren't really turning in or weren't really giving us any content to post because it was in December, they had finals, they were worried about um, um, schools and about youth college and, all, and FAFSA and all of this different stuff. So, you know, that's why we're there as staff to kind of take, um, kind of take a control a little bit and, and continue it on without having it be all on the youth. So we really do think that having a staff social media team is helpful and not only for youth to not be as overwhelmed, but also for one person to not be as overwhelmed. So if it was just, I know at one point it was me and Ashley because during COVID, there was just a lot of, you know, furloughs and it was just a lot of different, thing ha different things happening. And it does feel like a lot for one person to be having to come up with all the content to like, you get creatively, like you get, you get fatigued creatively. Like it, it quickly becomes a hassle instead of something fun that should be, um, that, that should be happening or you should be creating something fun. So definitely having a team of people that could be there um, 
maybe like three to five we would recommend because obviously the more people you have also the more ideas start rolling in um and dividing those responsibilities so that again it doesn't seem like too much on one person um we do have a kind of a lead a social media lead so that um they can kind of be the person that are leading the meetings that we have as a social media team um, and that our lead right now currently is Jess Melendez. So she's kind of the person in charge of leading the meetings, of bringing up any maybe updates from our supervisors or just anything um, that's more on the administrative side, even though there's not a lot, but just like the few things that are on the administrative side, Jess M would be the one to kind of take the lead on that. But other than that, the work is really much, pretty much divided um, equally amongst everyone so it's not too much on one person and then uh, other in addition to um, having a social media team as far as the platform itself and the content we really recommend posting consistently on one or two platforms so pick the one or two platforms that you want to focus on for us is is instagram because for our target population that is the app that they're using the most. It wouldn't really make sense for us to be using Facebook because our youth aren't on Facebook. Um, and then we also are trying a little bit to, to get on TikTok more, start doing more TikToks because obviously we know that that is where all the youth are at right now on TikTok. Um, so pick one or two platforms that you wanna focus on. Definitely don't pick more than two because once you have more than two, like it just becomes like too many, too many things to to try to um, to try to do at once. Although you, we do um, cross post on Facebook. So whatever we post on Instagram, it just automatically gets posted to our Facebook. But it's not like we're focusing any specific content to Facebook. Um, and then have structure to the post. So it's not like just, oh, I'm just today, I'm just gonna post this. And then on um, on Monday, I'll post something else. So definitely having a structure and we're gonna talk a little bit about the structure in the next slide. Um, it's, it's helpful not only for you to stay organized as a team, but also it might be helpful for your followers to know like, oh, every Tuesday they're gonna post every Wednesday. So it doesn't just seem like it's your Instagram is kind of all over the place. Um, and then having too many social media platforms, right, can be overwhelming. So on the next slide, um, we're gonna talk about the structure that we have as a team. Obviously each organization um, can have a different structure. This is just what we do and what works for us. Um, so we try to post three times a week and we just recently added one, um, one more on Fridays. So we usually post Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. On Tuesday, um, and each person has a post that they're assigned to. So on th Tuesdays, I'm assigned to the quest our question Tuesday post. So this post is really designed to be our educational post. So on question Tuesdays, we um, either from the questions that we receive from youth or from um, questions that we might think are some myths that we've heard around in the classrooms. We um, pose a question, we act like it's it's posing a question towards the health educators, and then we answer it as health educators, and it can be sexual health related, but as we know, youth are experiencing other um, other issues as well, or not issues, but it's, it's more of a mind, like a holistic approach to it. So any issue that has to do with youth, it can be mental health, it could be nutrition, it could be even the political climate that we're living in, anything that the youth are currently going through, we try to incorporate into the question Tuesdays. And then on Wednesday, um, my colleague Ashley um, is in charge of posting a traveling condom, which if you go on our page, and I'm pretty sure it'll come up right now, um, is a condom that has googly eyes that in the past pre-COVID would actually travel um, with our staff. Whenever our staff would go um, like on vacation somewhere, um, they would take the traveling condom and take a picture of it. So we would post that. Um, it just, it's just a fun thing to do for for youth to kind of 
take away the stigma from from condoms and just kind of add a little bit of fun to it. Um, and it's actually funny because when we would be in schools and we would go do outreach, there would be youth that would be like, where's the traveling condom? Did you bring it? So like, it's it, the traveling condom started to become kind of like a famous, no, not, not famous, but it started to become a known figure for teen clinic. And then as you can see, it's on here. Um, it's the, the kind of the ones in the middle. We did a, um, we did a, in October, if you see the one with the pumpkin, we did like a fall condom challenge um, and where we try to fit condoms inside of a pumpkin or a pumpkin inside of a condom. So that was definitely fun. And then on Thursdays, we have our PHA content. So I know we talked about our youth program. So our youth program is actually called the Peer Health Advocates and they're called the PHAs. So um, on Thursdays is their designated days to post. So every Thursday um, we have, well, not every Thursday, most Thursday when there's, um, when there's content, we have um, the PHAs just post what, what they come up with as a group. Um, and here's some examples that they did during Halloween. It was kind of like a Mythbuster, Ghostbusters type of, type of um, thing. And yeah, sometimes, unfortunately, youth don't always um, come up with content and that's, that's okay. We, we definitely know that they're not always going to be producing content for us, but in the times that they don't produce content, we try to uh, maybe just add in a little art, repost some art from cool organizations or cool artists um, that, are on that are on Instagram to just kind of keep the the feed alive and kind of just make a post that makes people feel good. And then on Fridays, like I said before, we recently added a um, like a TikTok Friday or, or yeah, Reel, because I'll, I'll talk about like the difference between TikToks and Reels on the next slides if you don't know. Um, but on Fridays, we have our, um, one of our coworkers, Noemi, and then our other coworker, Alex, they work on putting together TikToks that are more like self-care TikToks. Um, and they're really cool. Uh, honestly, I would recommend everyone to check them out if you have a TikTok. Noemi does a really good job at making TikToks where um, they kind of ground you and they kind of give you a space to breathe if you need to breathe, to do some yoga poses. Like she has different ones each week. So I definitely recommend, um, definitely recommend y'all check that out if you want. But that's basically our structure. Obviously it's gonna look different for each organization and what your capacity is, how many staff members you have. Obviously we have um, less staff members involved it's probably going to be less posts, but as long as you're keeping it consistent every week at the um, the same days, I think is what will work. And then next slide. So these are some of, of the other Instagram engagement features that we have tried and that we've done and that we also currently do. So like Jess was saying before, the Instagram stories that we do, there's there's so many different engagement pick features on Instagram. Um, and on stories, there's um, polls. So if you go on, if you make an Instagram story and if you um, create one, you can actually create a poll where you ask people like anything you really want and then um, for the, for the people that, um, sorry, I just, my dog is like crying. So I'm trying to like, <laughs> trying to like blur, blur him out, um, for, yeah. So there's polls and then there's anonymous questions. People can definitely engage and put in their answers. And then you can engage, um, by replying to it on the story in an anonymous way. And then um, there's IG Reels, which is basically the TikTok version of um, Insta Instagram version of TikTok. So um, you can definitely upload your TikToks onto Reel. We have never actually made a re like a Reel. Um, we usually just upload our TikToks onto Reel, if that makes sense. And then there's IGTV, which allows you to post videos that are longer than one minute. And then 
Um, definitely keeping the direct messages open for questions. We definitely do get um, a good amount of questions from our followers about our services or just questions in general about their sexual health. Um, whether it's, hey, I haven't gotten my period, what can I, um, what should I do? And then that's where we can, you know, obviously not getting too into detail. And if they need more um, counseling, that's when we would refer them to our teen clinic, but we can definitely give them just general info. Like if you want a plan B, this is where you can get it from. Um, if you're interested in getting condoms, this is where you can get it from. Um, so yeah, definitely keeping those DMs open um, will definitely, I think, be helpful for people and definitely promoting that on your Instagram, letting people know like, hey, if you DM us for any questions, DM us for any questions so that people know that they, they can reach out to you for anything. I see we have a question about the quarantine bingo. And I know Jess M was the one that put that together, right? So if you wanted to talk a little bit more about that. Sure. Um, so yeah, I created that with the date on there says April, 2020. Um, this was just something to, you know, once again, have youth interact with. A lot of people screenshot this and kind of circled things on their own. Um, while this isn't sexual health related, once again, we focus on what's going on around us in our environment and what's going on in the world. So this was just a fun way of kind of um, getting folks to engage. Um, was there a certain question on this one or just wanted more information? I can't see the chat right now. Yeah, it just it just said, what's quarantine bingo? That looks cute. Um, yeah, basically just wanting to know a little bit more about the quarantine bingo. <laughs> yeah, um, I was going to say, I think um, this is, if you are interested in checking out this bingo specifically, because this is just something that I made. This is located on our Instagram, not on our actual posts, but in a space that's called highlights. And you'll see that we have a bunch of different highlights called like mental health, sexual health, and there's one that's COVID-19. I believe this is saved on a highlight. So if you wanna screenshot this on your own and create your own quarantine bingo, please feel free to. All and right. then I think that can lead us into the next slide. Perfect. All right, so because of time and we wanna respect everyone that is here and getting all this information, we won't talk too much about our Instagram insights, um, but just know that on Instagram, Instagram actually offers a section where you can locate insights. Um, I apologize, I have my eight month old in the background. So when we're talking about different accounts on Instagram, you actually have the option of either having a business account, um, a regular account, or even a creator influencer account. When you have access to a business account, you're able to see these insights. So you're able to see how many people view your account every single day. Um, you can see how many people view your profiles. Um, we also have a function on our Instagram where we have a website. You'll see kind of like in the bio, there's that link tree. This is really helpful because then you can see how many people click that to get more information, whether you have a website for your actual organization or maybe you have an additional website like a link tree that has a bunch of other links to it. Um, but this is a good way to kind of um, look at that information. Um, and then once again, this gives you the opportunity to see top posts, um, your top posts and stories of the week or even for the month, because you have the option of either seeing the last seven days or the last 30 days. So this is definitely something we highly recommend taking a look at. Um, and then this is also another portion of our Instagram insights that gives you a follower breakdown. This is really helpful for folks when looking at insights because you can see the age range of the individuals following you, um, your audience as far as gender. Unfortunately, the audience is only binary where it's um, talking about women and men. So maybe hopefully in the future, we'll see a difference with that for Instagram. But this is definitely something we like to recommend folks to take a look at. And then on the bottom left corner, you'll see that there's like half of a post that's circled with the view insights. With the business account, every single post that you create, you can actually see your own individual insights of that post. How many people liked it? How many people shared it? And how many people saved it? So something we definitely recommend.
And then just more tips and I'll make sure to go through these fast since I know time and everything and wanna answer all, all your questions. Um, so when we talk about like having that social media team or anyone who wants to engage with youth in social media, we want to make sure that those people joining your team are passionate about it because that will just add more to the content. They'll put more time into it. And if someone isn't as passionate about it, um, the work won't come out as good and the ideas won't flow as well. So making sure that team really is there to make sure that they wanna get the best content out to youth because that's when the best ideas will come alive. Um, knowing your audience. So this is super important. Whoever your audience is, wherever you are, um, just for us necessarily, yeah, we're in San Diego, but we're in the South Bay of San Diego. So we have a whole different demographic of youth if, versus if I were in um, a little bit of North San Diego or in the middle of San Diego even. So just knowing your audience, knowing who your youth is, um, their background, their demographics really helps with the content you make. And actually when it comes to um, our Instagram post now, we do a lot of English and Spanish because we know our demographic is a lot of Spanish speaking youth. Um, leave room for creativity and flexibility. We talked about structure. So sometimes things come up where it's a really great say, webinar coming up for youth or really um, a virtual date night coming up for youth and we want to promote that Le making sure we leave space and that it's okay to kind of break up your structure sometimes when it comes to adding a post where it's like promoting other services locally or maybe a youth um, something's going on in the world and you know you had all this content planned but by the time you're on Instagram, it doesn't go with what you were gonna post because of everything happening in the world. Kind of paying attention, reading the room and knowing, um, okay, I'm gonna be flexible on this end and maybe post something, change what I was gonna post in regards to what's going on with the climate and everything. Uh, highlight our services on Instagram. So I did see someone ask about if we have a number or how they reach us. We do have a teen clinic text line that they can call, text, make an appointment but they're also able to DM us on Instagram. When we talked our, about our whole structure as a team, we do have um, one of our main um, team clinic health educators who works in the clinic. She answers a majority of the DMs on Instagram. And yes, that sometimes can get hard on the weekends when it comes to us not working and if it's an urgent topic. Um, so that's been a really tough barrier for us at times, but she is right on it Monday morning. As soon as um, she gets into work, it's the text line, DMs. And sometimes if we see an urgent DM as a team, we'll reach out to her and be like, is it okay if we answer it this time? Um, giveaways. Giveaways was a great, great way for us to get 1,000 followers. So the followers aspect, if you were ever nervous, like, what can I do? We um, actually did a giveaway. So we were just promoting... Um, a little goodie bag and doing all of those things to get a thousand followers. And we even reached out to all our other local organizations on Instagram and DM them if they could share. We made pretty much a flyer and an Instagram story they could share and post. And majority of them did. So that's, you would be surprised more often than not, other organizations love sharing other content too. So they were more than happy to spread it. And especially our youth, we told them to um, make sure they shared, cross posts, did all of those things, whether it was on TikTok and Instagram. Um, and then we did make sure to tell you earlier to change it to a creator account instead of like a business account, just because this allows you to post like music on stories, make it a lot more interactive. So that's just a good hint to know. Well, I already talked about collaborating with other organizations. That is one of my favorite things to do, especially with even Instagram lives. We've had um, even other organizations come in and give trainings for us. Um, it's really, really nice to make those connections with people in San Diego and know that if you're talking to youth about a resource, you can put a face to the organization and you can actually tell youth like, oh, I've actually talked to my friend Denise who works for so-and-so service and she blah, 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 blah. So it's a great way to honestly like earn that rapport with youth as well. And then a variety of apps. Um, our whole presentation was made on Canva. We love Canva. Um, it could be a little overwhelming at first if you're new to Canva, but just know it's a great, great, great way to make creative content for Instagram stories, Instagram posts, 
adding your pictures that you took on your own and adding words to it, it's amazing once you get used to it on your web browser or even on your phone. So both are really awesome. And we are getting a little more on TikTok, but hopefully the youth taking over the TikTok content versus us trying to be adults reaching youth, which could seem a little um, not as much rapport for youth and they don't really want to see adults all the time talking about youth wearing condoms. So just a little tips to know. All right, so since you all are gonna receive our slides, I'm not gonna really go into this um, slide, but I do wanna answer some of the questions that are in the chat because I think they're really good questions. So one of the ones that I saw in here was, does the health clinic administration resist the teen clinic being on social media? I see that resistance with many agencies in our area. And this is a really good point for us. Our organization, we haven't had any resistance, but I must admit, we are kind of like the, not the stepchild of our organization, but we are very progressive compared to, um, you know, the rest of our organization. Um, but we always, the thing with us is that our supervisors always, always try to advocate for our youth groups. And they always try to um, explain to the administrative people who may not really know what our youth are actually doing. Because if our, our administrators just see, um, a youth putting on a like a condom on a pumpkin they're gonna be like what are they doing but because our supervisors are really good at talking to administrators about hey this is we have a pha program we have a youth advisory board they're really cool like they're really good youth i think they understand that we have those youth programs so they they're a little bit more open about the the types of things that we um post on our social media um and then we answer the, and if any of Jess or Ashley, you want to answer any of the questions that you see on here, please go ahead. We did provide our Instagram handle. Let's see. What other ways besides the youth's input did you research or on, on what is current? Honestly, we, most of it is youth's input and then what we just do on our own time. So um, I know that we're not like getting technically paid, but if we are scrolling down TikTok or if we're scrolling down Instagram on our time off and if we see something that is um, relevant to what we're doing or we see something that's going on or another platform, we definitely um, maybe bring it up in a meeting or if it's a post that we think is relevant, then we, we um, DM it to our, um, to our teen clinic social media. So, we see, we definitely do that a lot where we'll DM from our personal account to um, the teen clinic. Um, I just wanted to touch on um, something someone had mentioned in the chat really quickly about shadow banning and constraints on um, terms and conditions. This is also something that's really important to be mindful of when you are talking about reproductive health services um, on Instagram or even TikTok. Um, as of right now, with terms of services, sometimes when folks are talking about things related to sex or sexuality or sex work, um, a, an account can become what we call shadow banned. And what that essentially means is if you are creating a post, let's say that has to do with any of the above, um, excuse me, any of the mentioned topics, your account may not show up on everybody's feed every single time. So if there's a point where last week you made this one post and wow, you had so many likes and then you made another post the week after and you realized how come there's not, you know, why is the interaction different? Um, it may be because that particular post or your account was shadow banned. Now there isn't an exact way to tell or look up like, am I shadow banned? It's just something that um, some accounts might recognize on their own. Um, this is also really important too, if you are an organization that is promoting a post, this is when you actually pay extra money to have a post show up on people's feeds. Um, depending on the language that you are using, if it is related to sexual health, sometimes you, excuse my daughter in the background, sometimes you may have a post that is not approved because of the nature of the content you're posting. So definitely be mindful of that. This has nothing to do with how amazing your organization is. It's just the terms and services that exist on Instagram and TikTok. We have run into situations like this in the past. And typically what we do is we contest those, um, 
post because we're using it for educational content only. So typically we're able to have those posts restored, but that is something to definitely be mindful of as well.